Hello everybody and welcome back to the Genesis Designs model bench again. Uh, apologies to anybody that was watching previously. I did already try to do this live roundup video and I lost my internet and it was just awful. So I've started again. I'm coming direct to YouTube so everything's upside down. I apologise for that. I'm probably going to make a lot of mistakes here with holding things the right way up for me, which will be the wrong way up for you. But hey-ho, we work with what we've got. Um, so, yes, Full English Friday. Uh, like a big meal, this is a big roundup of lots of little bits and bobs that I've picked up over the last couple of weeks. And uh, those of you that are familiar with the Full English Breakfast will know what a big meal that can be. So let's, uh, let's get on with it, shall we? So first up, I'm going to show you I don't even know what the right way is up anymore. Vision aid, magnifying glasses with LED light. Um, I finally got an old enough to be completely unable to see what I'm doing half the time at the bench now. Um, I do wear glasses for distance work, watching TV, driving, etc. I've never needed glasses at the bench until now. Um, I've found increasingly of late that uh, I can't see properly i can't focus properly on things that i'm working on so these popped up on my facebook feed of all places and i thought you know what for 23 pounds i'll give these a look and i'll see if they're any good and what you get in that big black box you get a little lens wiper and you get this rather fan dangled looking scary frankly pair of glasses there is a light in the front which is poseable so I do have really, really good bench lighting. I don't need a light, so there's no batteries in it, but it's there for those that might be working at, at the kitchen table. This could be quite handy, in fact. And you get a set of lenses. You don't just get one. Pop, pop those there. You actually get a whole box of lenses. And they range from a times one through 1.5 to... I think that's 2.3 and then five times magnification now I've, I've looked through them all and for my eyes the 1.5 is pretty much spot on i can't actually use the two thickest ones my eyes just don't even want to focus with those but that you know i could use them if i tried but i think it would just give me eye strain honestly and i, I don't need to magnify it i just need to be able to focus so i'm using the 1.5 that seems to it gives me a little bit of magnification and it and it allows me to focus. And I'm, I found it to be really, really handy. Um, I used it to... Oh, heck, what was I doing on the hook the other day? Oh, rescribing these nacelles. Rescribing these engine nacelles for the Hercules. As you can see, they're not terribly large parts. And the scribing is... Um, very, very good, but very, very light. And it's quite hard to see, even with good light, probably especially with good light, very shallow. So using these, I was able to see properly and actually do a decent job of scribing something, which has been eluding me lately, and now I see why. So these are, if you're like me, and getting a little bit ancient, probably not a bad thing to get hold of. Uh, there are lots of different sorts of these around on the market. Um, and I must admit, like many, I suppose I've sort of thought ew i'm not getting those gosh no but honestly they've, they've really worked well for me i'm really pleased i did so these were 23 pounds off of the facebook shop the website is www wrong way up woman www.visionaidmagnify.com which takes you to the neat and handy website which is where i got them from so that's that okay more modelling modeling related things. And again, I apologise if anybody was watching the first one and may have seen some of this already. I'm really sorry, but it, it just went wrong and I, I didn't realise. So, Abtylon. I already have a couple of sets of Abtylon oils. Latterly produced by MIG Productions, not any more. These are the ones I already have. Slightly, slightly different style, but it's the same product. And... As a predominantly aircraft modeler, these colours are all a little bit on the dusty and rusty side of the, ske of the spectrum for me. Um, I don't generally have to put a lot of mud or rust on aircraft models, so they're of slightly minimal use sometimes. Um, 
so when I saw this set, I thought this is ideal because we've got some much, much purer, brighter colours in here. Um, what we actually have listed according to the back is smoke yellow, faded dark yellow, faded navy blue, faded green and cream brown. Here we go. So it's actually quite a bright blue, as you can see. I'll just turn these upside down so that you're not going to get annoyed with me. There you go. Um, and you might be sitting there thinking, well, what on earth do you want bright blue oil paint for, woman? You, you know, you, you don't paint things bright blue, even on aircraft. Well, that's true. I don't. But the useful part about these for me isn't so much literally the colours as they are here, but how much more scope that gives me when mixing colours myself. Because previously, using these muted tones even though this set has a bluish color a green and a red they're really really dull faded versions of blue and red so it's difficult to sometimes to use them to mix other colors and anybody who's done art will will be able to appreciate what i'm trying to get out here uh, but sometimes it can be hard mixing mixing colors using already mixed colors as it were so i picked these up these are from modelsforsale.com uh, 23 pounds for this set of uh, six it's not the cheapest thing in the world i know uh but six six tubes of oil paint from the fine art store you know dale around or whatever probably not going to cost you any less so i don't think it's uh way off the mark honestly next up uh, okay interactive the ultimate guide and reference for the modeler. And this is mud, rust and dust series number one. Now, as I've already said, I am predominantly an aircraft modeler. So applying mud, dust and rust effects is something that I don't honestly know how to do. Um, thanks to Mr. Nightshift, or sorry, Uncle Nightshift or Martin Kovacs, as he should be called. Uh, the Night Shift channel on YouTube, which I heartily recommend if anybody watching this hasn't already subscribed to him, um, go over and have a look at his videos. It's very entertaining and he's just, quite frankly, a brilliant modeler. Um, and thanks to him, I've pretty much cracked the rust part of things, but mud and dust are still a little bit mysterious to me. So I saw this and I thought, let's have a look at that. And in it, it's not a how-to guide. Get that out of the way first. There is a section at the back. I'm building a, a Merkava, a Merkava, a Merkava, I don't know, a tank. And that does have some pictures of techniques in it. But the, the majority of the book, booklet, is, it, is this. Huge, bright, brilliantly, clearly reproduced photographs of muddy, dusty, rusty, modern military vehicles. It's absolutely spectacular. Throughout, really brilliant reference photos showing you how these vehicles actually do look when they're must, musty. That's a, yeah, muddy or dusty, <laughs> or both. So you've got dry dust and mud, mud sort of effects on these. You've got the wetter, sort of more European looking idea here. Really mud on there really mud really great photos throughout and all the pictures in this are of israeli vehicles and although good grief look at that although i won't be building any israeli vehicles anytime soon you can take these photographs and you can you can apply these kind of effects to any vehicle um, the specific splatter patterns obviously are going to be different but if you're really worried about that, you're going to be looking at proper references anyway. But yeah, this is £10. This also came from modelsforsale.com. It's, it's a book zine. We've got 80 pages, thick, glossy, good quality paper. Really great. I think for £10, for the cost of two magazines, I think that's definitely worth a look for anyone who's interested in vehicle modelling, in particular if they want to look at mud and dust effects. Really good. Well pleased with that. Next up, I'm still on the models for sale theme. This is a 
Gecko model, so I'm not. Uh, it's not a manufacturer I'm honestly familiar with. Uh, modern British Army weapon and personal equipment set in 135th scale. As you can see on the box, this is a set of various different British or weapons that the British Army use currently uh, and in recent years, um, along with backpacks, helmets, camelbacks, knee pads, and bits and bobs that fit onto the Osprey bo body armour system. Uh, you might be wondering why this predominantly aircraft modeller would need a set like this. <laughs> um, and I'll tell you, uh, I have a kit in the stash. It's a Meng kit, I believe, of a Toyota Hilux pickup truck. And the reason I have that kit is because when I spent some time in Afghanistan with the Royal Air Force, the air crew of the Hercules aircraft that I was there to support used to cut around in a, shall we say, requisition Toyota Hilux. And I have a photograph of it outside our um, our hut. And it was always full to the gunnels in the back of, of the crew's body armour, bags, helmets, pistols and rifles. So obviously when I build it, I want to be able to put all of that stuff in the back. Um, and finding an SA-80 in 135th isn't something I've found easy. I have seen various different aftermarket ones, but they've all seemed incredibly expensive. Uh, so when I saw this set, I, I, I jumped on it. Uh, this set is £13.50. And as you can see from the numbers, you do get a lot of stuff in here. This is just the outer sleeve. When you take that off, there's a fairly sturdy flip top box in there. You've got an instructions of sorts. That's the same diagram as the box top, but it's just a, a bit of assembly for those of these weapons that need it in here, along with some color details here and there. A nice picture of MTP showing you what, what it actually looks like. I've got quite a lot of that in the wardrobe, so I don't really need it, but hey-ho. And here's the, here are the sprues. There's quite a few, as you can see. Um, it's all nicely, nicely moulded stuff. Focus. There you go. It looks good. And there's also, right at the bottom there, a really, frankly, quite enormous photo etch fret with the weapon slings on it, predominantly buckles and weapon slings, which honestly most modellers might be better off creating their own using lead foil because that's going to drape more naturally, but they're there in photo etch if you want to use them. Nice set, um, reasonable price, I think, for what you get in it. And very, very useful for any kind of, any of that kind of modelling. So still not being an aircraft modeller, although I am predominantly an aircraft modeller, one of the other projects I should be looking at over my Christmas holiday is I'm building a model which requires a base. You will see something of this, even if it is just a sort of a final reveal over the next couple of weeks. But I needed some rocks. So I googled diorama rocks because I had no idea where to get diorama rocks from uh, and one of the search results was was this via an Etsy shop this is warworldgaming.com and I got these two sets from them so this is a set of various sized rock gravel and sand type stuff as you can see and although these aren't very large bags, granted, this isn't a great big bag. It's quite heavy. Uh, get my ruler. What we got? These bags are about two and a half inches square. So that gives you an idea of how much product you're actually getting. It's not that much, but I would imagine you're going to get several bases out of this. And if, if you're doing small bases and figure bases, you're going to get dozens out of these. So it's not so bad. So we've got all different sizes and colours of rocks and sand and then in this one 
three more. There we go. This is the winter basing kit. I've got this weird looking lichen y stuff you can use for making twigs. There's a, a set of the pre made grassy clumps. The type of grass that you put into a, a flock applicator, which I don't have, but. And then we've got two sizes of this kind of like a bark chipping kind of medium. This is a white coloured sand. This is a white coloured flock. And then a black flock. I don't know what you would use a black flock for. Uh, I'd, I'd love if someone does know, stick a comment on. It'd be interesting. Um, these two sets cost me in total... 18 English pounds with postage. They came very promptly, even though it's that time of year. Nicely packaged, as you can see. So the website in question. As I say, I got them from an Etsy shop, but you can see there, www.warworldgaming.com. Try saying that when you've had a couple of beers. I don't know what's going to come out. But yes, very pleased with those. Dead handy and exactly what I need. And then, finally, that, yeah, to finish up, arrived today, just this morning, the latest stuff from Wing Leader. Uh, I pre-ordered this, uh, one of these, well, I basically went on the website to pre-order this, which is number five in the Wing Leader photo archive se series. I've shown you all the others up to now. We've got the Spitfire, we've had the Hurricane, we've had the two BF109 units books. This is and the this book covers the Avro Lancaster, clearly. And in common with all the others, it's just an absolute gold mine of information. Beautiful photos, quite a few colour photos in this one. Big clear, really well printed, or as well as they can be, given that they're, they're wartime photos at the end of the day. But just a look at that. Fabulous. I absolutely love these books. Um, they're £20, £19.99 a piece, worth every penny. Even if you don't have any plans to build the subjects, they're just really interesting. The Mark II. It's a I see if I can. It's an absolutely stunning photo in here. I think, I think it's towards the back. Of a wheel. Yes, really. Here you go. Detail in this in this photo that for a modeler looking at this, the oil leaks on that tire, the mud patterns, the chipping, it's great, great photo. And that these books are just fantastic for it. There you go, RP nineteen ninety five. Got this direct from Wing Leader, as I do. Um, I've just had these printed. This is the twenty twenty one aviation book catalog, full color. Um, this came free and any orders will get one of these free while stocks last and it just details the various series what's coming up and what is already available for the photo archive set the next edition the next issue is Spitfire 5 well timed to coincide with the uh, imminent I would say release of the Edward Spitfire 5 that's going to be in the early part of next year I believe And we've got part three of the Messerschmitt units in the Battle of Britain coming up as well. So that's the next two books in the photo archive series. And there's some example pages of those. The other thing I picked up, it has actually been available for a while now, uh, but I hadn't bought one, is the Dan Buster Lancaster book. Now, this is a hardback book. It's a decent size. It's got this lovely plush cushion cover on it. This book is £30. Um, and it is purely about the Type 464 brackets provisioning Lancaster, or as you and I know it, the Dambuster Lancaster. 
And this this is just I don't know who does the illustrations for these books, but they're just absolutely fantastic. And this one's got lots of this kind of stuff, which is a computer rendered sort of um image. It's not a photo, even though it looks like one a little bit. It's all done on computer. Even these really looks like a photo, but it actually isn't. So well done. And all, it just goes through all the different modifications. Really like these shop, these uh, images. These are done in, a, in like a bare metal style, so you can really see the detail. They're absolutely great. Yeah, all the changes, how it worked, the mine itself, how they modified the aircraft to carry it, the um, various iterations of the mine as it went through development. Really detailed, great stuff. Even the trailer that the bombs went on. Camouflage and markings of the aircraft. Just a fantastic book. Any interest at all in the Danbuster raid, this has got to be a must have. Uh, even if not any interest, in fact, in the Lancaster, this has to be called a must have. There's a killer photo there of the crew of um, ED825, Johnny Johnson's crew. Stunning, stunning publication. I'm a really big fan of these wing leader, wing leader books, and um, it's annoying because it's costing me quite a lot of money. They've got quite a, a rabid release schedule, <laughs> stuff coming out all the time. So there we go. That's your little roundup. Last couple of weeks of the odds and sods that I've been buying. It's quite random, I know. I have also bought a couple of kits, but you've seen those separately. Um, just a quick final point before I go just show you where my Zvezda Hercules is at now here we go there's the fuselage all the decals are on now or as many as I'm going to put on it anyway she's sitting on her wheels and I've just fitted to this morning I've just fitted the refueling probe now I've decided because the wing fit is so good and I'm about to demonstrate again I already painted it with the wing not fitted and you can see there I've just stuck it on I can actually pick the model up by the wing I can't because I've just told you I can you can do normally um, it's quite it sits there quite nicely so because of the size of the model it's not small obviously I've decided I'm going to leave the wing separate so I fitted the probe this morning and sawn through it at the join there so that the wing can still come off so I can create a transport box like something like this and the wing can sit there and then whenever it, when it needs to be displayed they can just pop the wing on but there it is almost there I'm going to be painting the engines the propellers are all done as well I love repetition yeah three stripes and a black section on four different damn propellers mm. uh, yeah this should be finished this weekend and I'll get finished photos up on the Facebook page as soon as it is um, along with some thoughts on the build and the, and the kit itself as well for any that uh, wish to know so there we go that's my little roundup for Friday that's your full English done with you shouldn't need any lunch now um, <laughs> And just to finish off, to say goodbye, here's a goat. All right, then. I'll see you all next time. Genesis out. <laughs>